Hey everyone, Hannah here from Daisy Farm Crafts with a new baby blanket pattern. I made this blanket with Bernat Forever Fleece yarn, uh, which is a new yarn from Yarnspirations. This was my first time working with it and I absolutely love how this blanket turned out. The yarn is super easy to work with and it just works up really nice and is super soft and comfortable. Um, I think it's a great yarn to use if you're a beginner since it's a little bit chunky so it's easy to, to see your stitches um, but it doesn't actually work up to be too heavy so it's still really cozy um, but not super heavy which I think is great for a baby blanket um, and this yarn is 100% polyester and uh, for a baby blanket I ended up using about two skeins of the main gray color and then one skein each of the the color the stripe colors in the middle of my blanket and um, for this blanket I used a size MN 9 millimeter crochet hook all right so to get this pattern started you just want to make a base chain that is any even number so I'm just gonna make a small practice swatch and I'm gonna chain 10 and for the actual baby blanket that I made, I chained 66. And for this blanket, I'm going to use what my mom and I like to call the crumpled griddle stitch, which is um, just alternating single crochet and double crochet. So I'm gonna start in the second chain from the hook and start with a single crochet. So I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. And then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through two loops. So that's my single crochet. And then in the next chain, I'm going to work a double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over and pull a loop back through and then I'm going to yarn over and pull just through the first two loops and then yarn over through the last two loops and that's all I'm going to do all the way across the row is just go back and forth between single crochet and double crochet And since I chained 10, I'm gonna have nine stitches total. Um, so I should always start and end each row with a single crochet. So there's my last single crochet. So now I'm just going to chain one and turn. And you can already see kind of that nice little texture popping out. And now I'm just going to single crochet right into the top of that last single crochet that I just made. And then I'm just going to do the same exact thing on this row and work a double crochet into the next stitch. And um, I'm always going to be working a single crochet into a single crochet and a double crochet into double crochet so that they kind of stack on top of each other. So here I am at the end of that row and I'm gonna end with a single crochet into that last single crochet and then I'm just going to chain one and turn. So for my blanket, I um, just worked four rows of each color. So I started with this gray color. So I'm gonna work two more rows of this and then I'll show you how um, to switch to a different color. So here I am at the end of my fourth row um, and I'm gonna work my last single crochet 
but I'm going to pause before I finish the stitch when I still have two loops on my hook. And I'm going to cut this gray yarn and leave myself self a, a long tail that I can weave into the blanket later with a tapestry needle. Um, but I'm going to worry about that at the end. So I'm just going to leave that long tail and then I'm going to get my new color, which is this really pretty blue. And I'm going to lay it across my hook, also leaving a tail long enough that I can weave in later. And I'm going to finish off the stitch by pulling through those two loops. And then I'm just going to chain one and turn. And I like to wrap the, the gray around the back of my work just to finish off the, the V of that last stitch and just crochet under it just for one stitch just to kind of um, keep it a little bit more secure until I weave it in at the end. But you can also just leave it to the side, um, but just if you kind of want to finish off that last stitch, you can pull it around the end of your work. So now I'm just going to keep the same pattern of alternating single and double crochet, making sure that I'm always starting and ending with single crochet. And I'm just going to work four rows with this new color. And as you can see in this picture, I had a total of five colors and I just did four rows for each color and then repeated them a total of three times. All right, so once you're finished with your blanket, you can um, just finish off that last stitch and then tie off, leaving yourself a, a long tail. And then um, this is where you'll wanna weave in all of your ends before you, um, if you were to decide to add a border um, or if you want to just leave it and you can weave in all these ends and then be done and um, we just like to use a tapestry needle and just kind of weave the yarn in and out in between the stitches going in different directions um, just as many times as we need until it feels secure And then you can just cut that yarn and then it just disappears into the blanket. So you want to do that with all of your ends. So I'm going to do that real quick and then I'll show you how I did the border for this blanket. So for the border of this blanket, I started out with just working one round of single crochet before I added um, a back loop single crochet ribbed border. So to start, I just pulled up a loop in the top left hand corner and chained one. And then I just tried to work one single crochet per row on the sides. So since I did four rows for each color, I tried to just get four single crochets per color section. So I'm gonna kind of count my first chain one as a stitch for this first section. And then I'm going to try to get four stitches for that gray section. And then I just worked three single crochet into my corners. So just three single crochets all into that same corner space. And then when I got to the bottom of my blanket, the, the side with the base chain, I tried to insert my hook kind of in between the stitches. If you can kind of see, instead of right on the edge of the base chain, I kind of worked in between the, the stitches on the bottom just to um, make sure that my base chain didn't kind of pull away from the blanket. So if you can just kind of insert your hook a little bit deeper in between those stitches that'll help from 
help you to avoid getting any kind of holes that sometimes happens when your when your base chain pulls away. So, and then I just work three stitches into that corner space. And then I just did the same thing back up the side and on the top, just working single crochet all the way around. All right, so here I am back at the starting corner. So I'm just going to slip stitch into that starting chain one that I did at the beginning. And now I'm going to start doing my back loop single crochet ribbed border. So I am going to just chain four. You can chain as many as you want if you want your border to be thicker. I wanted it to be a little bit shorter for this blanket so I just chained four. So, which means I'm always going to have three stitches. So I'm going to work three single crochets back down that chain. So that was two and there's my third. And now I'm going to slip stitch into the next two stitches. So I want to look for the next two stitches that don't have any stitches worked into them. So I'm going to insert my hook under both of those loops and pull directly through. So there's my two slip stitches. And then I'm going to kind of turn it towards my left hand like a page in a book. And again, I want to make sure that I only work three stitches. So I'm going to skip over the first two where I did my slip stitches and I'm going to do back loop single crochet into those top three stitches. So just inserting my hook under that back loop, I'm going to work one, two, three, single crochets. So now I'm in a chain one and then turn my work back the way that it was before. So just kind of turn it back towards my right hand. And now I'm just going to go back down again, um, but this time only working in the back loops. So just looking for those first three stitches. So there's one, two and sometimes it can be a little bit tricky on the third stitch to get that back loop you kind of have to dig for it a little bit but I want to make sure I get all three stitches and then I'll work my slip stitches into the next two stitches so I'm just going to do that all the way across and then um, I will show you how I um, work the corners All right, so when I got to the corner spaces, all um, when it came time that I reached the corner, I just slip stitched one time into the corner instead of slip stitching into the next two stitches. And then I turned like usual. Um, this time I only had one to skip over. So I just worked three single crochets back up chain one and turn it and go back down
and I'm just going to insert my hook into that same corner space. And I'm just going to slip stitch one time right into that same corner. So that was the second time that I slip stitch into that corner. So I'm going to single crochet back up and back down and then I'll do it a third time. So I want to just slip stitch into that corner space a total of three times so that it kind of anchors my corner and allows it to, to curve around the corner. So after I've slip stitched three times into that same corner, then I can just continue on like before and just slip stitch into the next two stitches and then just keep working the this side like we did the same side. And you kind of just want to, you know, test your corner as you go. If slip stitching three times into that corner is too much and it's making your, your blanket ruffle, you can just do it twice. If you feel like you need to do it a fourth time, you can. You kind of want to just um, look at it and make sure it, it looks even. So, and then I'm just going to keep working this side the same way as I did the first side and I'll work um, all the corners the same. And then um, I'll show you how I uh, finish it up when I get back to the starting corner. So here I am at the end of my border. I just worked three times into that last corner space. So now I'm just going to, I'm going to end when I'm at the top and I'm going to tie off and then I'm just going to use that tail with a tapestry needle to just sew the border together. So I'm just going to combine it at the top and then I can just use my needle to um, sew it together all the way down and then um, just finish weaving in um, that end. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy making this blanket. If you make any of our Daisy Farm Crafts projects, please uh, take a picture and come share with us on Facebook or Instagram using hashtag Daisy Farm Crafts. We would love to see. And as usual, the full free written pattern for this blanket is on daisyfarmcrafts.com. Happy crocheting!